God bless every one of you out there. This is the word of power, gospel. We're here because God put us here for you. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. We love you out there. Amen. I'm Reverend Ronald Davis. This is the Word of Power Gospel Hour. I pray right now that the Lord would anoint the music, anoint the preaching and the teaching today. And if some of you will get set free, get some understanding, have your eyes open. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you all out there. I'm the pastor of the Word and the Spirit of Life Church. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. I want to do a little song here today. We're going to worship the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, let your anointing be upon everything today. And you touch your people, set them free. We honor you. We worship you. We praise you. We praise your mighty, majestic, holy name. For you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And Lord, we give you all glory and honor and praise today, Father. And touch your people today, Lord. Set them free. Whatever their needs are, Father, meet them today. In the precious, holy name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Let's worship the Lord a little bit, okay? Jesus, we love
Some of y'all kind of walked out from under his covering and you need to get back under that umbrella. Amen. You need to get back under the umbrella of his covering, his love, his protection. You need to feel his holy presence again. Amen. Hallelujah. There's nothing worse. Let me tell you something today, okay? There is nothing worse than being a Christian and losing the presence of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? Amen. There's some of y'all out there, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? You haven't felt his presence in a long time. God wants you to be filled up again today, okay? Can I hear an amen? Amen. Well, hallelujah. Glory. I hope God's presence is just radiating and beaming out there to you. That the Holy Spirit with an outstretched hand is touching you today. Reviving you in your spirit today. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. <clears throat> well, how y'all doing out there today? Good, I hope. Some of y'all going through some things. We all go through things. The Bible says we're all called. And we're all going to go through the fire and be tested by trials. Amen. How you come out in trials determines how you go in them. And how you react toward them is, determines how quick you'll get out of them. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The name of my message today is do not avenge yourself. Let me say that again. Some of you all are taking the fight on yourself and you don't need to fight the battle. Listen, God don't need no help. <laughs> amen. Can I hear an amen? Some of y'all trying to help God and he don't need your help because all your help did was put you in a bind and a bigger mess. Can I hear an amen? amen? Let me tell you something. If there's anything that I've learned in my life, if you do it God's way, it will work. You do it your way, you're going to make people mad. You're going to make people offended. You're going to be offended, and you just may get in trouble. Can I hear an amen? amen. You're not God. I'm not God. Only God can remove mountains, honey. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me give you some scriptures today. The name of my message is do not avenge yourself. There's some of you all out there. Because the reason I know, because God gave me this message, because I was going through a trial and a test, and some people came against me, and I really didn't do anything to them. But the devil was using them, and they was carnal. And I had to react right. Can I hear an amen? amen? The Bible says, love those who curse you. Bless those who curse you. Amen. we got to do it the Lord's way. Now, if I wanted to do my way... I'd give them a ni nice big right old right old. Amen. That's what a lot of us like to do. Smack them over the head with a baseball bat. Come on, be honest today. We're all alike. Amen. Unless you're walking in the Spirit, you're going to think that way. Amen. We've got to walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, then won't I fulfill the lust of the flesh? Can I hear an amen? Then you're walking love toward people. Can I hear an amen? Listen, let me tell you something today. I'm going to tell you the true fight that we're fighting. Paul said over in Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Listen, honey, your opponent and your enemy is not those people. It's the devil using those people. And sometimes it's the devil in those people. Amen? Come on. There's only two spirits in this world. That's God and the devil. Amen. There's many voices, the Bible says, but there's only two spirits. That's God and Satan. Amen. Can I hear your name Amen. The battle you're fighting is not with human beings. Can I hear an amen? I'm going to tell you how to get out of the trials you're in if you will do what I say. And the Bible says in James 1.18, to be a doer of the word, or James uh, 1.21, be a doer of the word, not just hearers being deceived. You have to apply the word of God to your life and do what it says or it avails you nothing. Amen. Can I hear an Amen. amen. I want to take you to your Bible. I want you to open the Bible up with me today. If you're a Christian, even if you're not a Christian, we pray today that you will be by the time this broadcast is over. Amen? Can I hear an amen? amen. In Ephesians chapter 6, let's go there, okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6. 
See, some of you all, you don't understand about the devil. Some of you know there is a devil, but you don't know his tactics. You don't know how he comes against people. He causes to sin, but he's very wise. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me if you have a Bible to, to Ephesians chapter 6. And starting in Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the part of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You see, the devil has tactics that he's going to deploy and use against you. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for anointing this word as it goes forth. I thank you your word is not bound and your word has free course to go forth and accomplish that that you sent it to do. And Father, I thank you today. I pray you confirm your words with signs and wonders. You said in Mark 16, uh, 15 through 20, it said they went into all the world and preached the gospel. And the Lord was with them, helping them, confirming his word. As I preach your gospel today, Father God, I pray you do the same thing because you're the same God. Jesus said, I am the same today, yesterday, and forever. He, you're an unchanging God. We have an unchanging Savior, an unchanging Word. We have to change, conform, and line up with the Word. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Therefore, taking unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand withstand in the evil day and having done all the stands keep on standing those people that's coming against you that the devil is using keep on standing back up back off don't do anything to them let god have the battle can you hear me if you're listening to me hear me and you won't get in trouble and god will deal with them amen or if they don't change god will move them out away from you can i hear an amen i've seen it happen too many times when we do what God's Word says, the Bible says that God watches over His Word to perform it. He hastens His Word. He quickens His Word to perform it. God's Word will not, it says in Isaiah, that God's Word will not return back unto Him void, but what He will do the very thing that He sent it to accomplish to do. God's Word will not come back void. When you pray, He heard your prayers. And when you back off and give God the battle, the battle is the Lord's. God never loses a battle. He's a God of war. He's never lost a battle. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Some of you all are in the wrong battle. You're not fighting the devil. You're not battling the devil. You're not praying to, the, to, to stop the devil's activities in your life. You're coming back against those people. You're in the wrong battle. Let me hear you. Let me tell you right now. The Bible says we do not war after flesh and blood. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the devil. Some of y'all are worn back against those people, and it's, it's wrong. You might think it's right in your mind, in your human, humanistic, secular mind, but it's not. Let me tell you today. Like I said, I've seen God move too many times when we get out of the way and let God be God. Can I hear you? Can I hear an amen? I know sometimes you want to bop them. Sometimes you want to just tell them off really good. But it's best just to zip your lip and be quiet in the name of Jesus. Amen? It's better to be quiet. Amen? And be not angry. The Bible says be angry and sin not. For anger does not work the righteousness of God. Can I hear an amen? It's hard to do when you've always had that fight and take up for yourself. It's hard to give the battle to the Lord. But when you fight that battle, honey, you're, losing the fi uh, uh, you're fighting a losing battle sometimes. So what if you beat them up? You're still going to lose. You're going to have to pay lawyers. You're going to have to pay, uh, face a judge. And you may go to jail. So who won? Honey, get in the right fight tonight. Listen to me. Some of y'all got people coming against you and you want to come back against them. Some of y'all have even contemplated going back in there and doing something to them. Hey, listen to me tonight. Don't do it. Do what God says. And he'll take care of them. And I guarantee you, when He takes care of them, they, they, they're taken care of. Because like I said, God will deal with their hearts and convict them. And if they don't change, you know what will happen? God will move them out, not you. You just keep doing what God's Word says. Be a doer of the Word. Amen? Hallelujah. Some of you in the wrong fight, you need to get in the right fight. Over in Matthew chapter 26, verse 50 through 53. 
I'll tell you a little story. Whenever they came into the Garden of Gethsemane, Judas walked over to Jesus and he gave him a kiss. That was the kiss of betrayal. Judas, they paid him to betray Jesus. They gave him 30 pieces of silver. That's less than $20. You know what? Judas sold Jesus out for money. There's many of you all selling Jesus out for money today. You're turning your back on Jesus. Peter turned his back. Peter turned his back and he ran away from Jesus when he should have been running toward Jesus. Jesus was his only hope and chance. Some of you all turn your back on Jesus today for money. Not fulfilling the will and the call of God in your life. Can I hear an amen? Oh, this is just coming out of spirit, but it's coming out. God is talking to the people. He's talking to the church. He's talking to them right in this hour and this day. Those that's not compromising are speaking the word of God. And God's word is going to either set you free or, or it's going to judge you. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Don't be foolish. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what happened when they, when they uh, went to uh, take Jesus, Peter pulled out his sword and he sliced off cut off a, 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 a guard's ear. Jesus took his ear and put it back on and healed it. But he told Peter, he said, put up that sword, Peter. Those that live by the sword shall perish by the sword. Do you understand what I'm saying to you today? If you live by the sword in the natural, and you get in the natural, and you get into the arena of this world and get into a fight with people in this world, the Lord said you'll perish. Those who live by the sword in this world, if you get violent in this world, you're going to perish. We need to get violent in the spirit. The Bible says ever since the days of John the Baptist, the heavens suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. We're not taking the kingdom of God by force. We're taking the kingdom of Satan by force. Some of you all need to learn spiritual warfare. That's why Satan has attacked you in your life. Because you have no sword. You don't have the word of God in you. You don't have the sword to fight the devil with. And you don't have your armor on. And his fiery darts are piercing you. His attacks are taking you down. And they're taking toll on your life. Honey, you got to learn to do spiritual warfare. Amen. That's another message, another time. But some of you all wonder why all these things are happening to you. It's really not those people. It's the devil using those people. Can I hear an amen? But don't curse them. Don't come back against them and get in the arena of a war and a fight with them in the natural because you'll lose. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Let me write down. I'm going to tell you, I just went through some things. And don't tell me I don't know nothing about none of this stuff. I live the same life you do. I'm out in the workplace. I have people come against me. But you know what? I got to learn how to handle it. I got to learn how to do it right. And I failed in the past because I want to get in the flesh and slay them in the flesh. And, and I've worked some pretty hard jobs in my life, laborious jobs. And I, I'm kind of strong. And I want to get in the flesh and slay them. But I can't do that. Because just as Jesus told Peter, those who live by the sword will perish by the sword. You'll perish. Can I hear an amen? Let's get in God's fight. Let him handle it. Amen. I'm learning. I've always had to fight with myself. I grew up rough. I grew up in the wrong neck track. On the other side of the tracks, I grew up hard. I grew up rough. And I kept living that life till Jesus saved me one day. And I've always had to fight for myself or get hurt. Now it's hard to get to fight over to him. But I'm telling you, you need to get to fight to him. Can I hear an amen? It's the only way you're going to win. Amen. Because it's going to cost you maybe blood, cost you getting hurt, cost you lose your job, cost you go to jail, cost you to lose everything. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. You don't want that. God don't want that for you. God take care of you. Give it to him. Give the battle to the Lord. The battle is the Lord's. Amen. And the victory is ours. Amen. Here's what the Lord told me. Don't use the sword like Peter, the carnal sword. Those who live by sword, I told you, shall perish by the sword. Don't get into the arena of this world in a carnal fight with people. That's what the devil wants you to do, especially those in authority. Honey, even though you may be in authority spiritually, they may be in authority over you. Let me tell you a little story real quick. Uh, <clears throat> one time... I think in Matthew chapter, Luke chapter 2, Jesus stayed behind in the temple for three days. His mom and dad, they went to Jerusalem to the feast. 
Okay, Jesus stayed behind. They left and they went on. Three days they was looking for Jesus. And they went back to Jerusalem and they found him in the temple. And the Bible says that, that uh, Mary went to Jesus and she said, Where have you been? Don't you know we've been worried about you? And Jesus said to her, Mom, don't you know this I should be about my father's business? He was learning and being trained up to do God's bidding and will. But you know what Jesus did? Jesus wasn't the spiritual authority. But you know, in the natural, Jesus, the Bible said, he submitted unto them and he left the temple and he went with them. Honey, there's times when your spiritual authority and their natural authority, you have to bow down to them. But they have to answer for what they do to you. John the Baptist baptized Jesus in the river Jordan. Amen. John the Baptist said, I'm not even worthy to unlatch at your sandals. Why am I baptizing you? Jesus says, suffer for now. Jesus submitted to a prophet, to John the Baptist, his uh, cousin, because John the Baptist comes from the lineage of Aaron through the Aaronic priesthood, and he had to baptize Jesus that the mantle would come upon Jesus as the high priest. Amen. Can I hear an amen? You see, Jesus did not come from the, the tribe of... Uh, uh, the ironic, he didn't, Levi. Jesus, uh, Jesus did not come from the tribe of Levi. The tribe of Levi uh, uh, was the tribe that the priest came out of. And Aaron and his followers were the only ones the high priest could come out of. The priest could come out of, of the tribes of Levi. Okay, so... John the Baptist came out of the lineage of the Aaronic priesthood where he was a high priest. You see, Jesus could not be the high priest until that mantle was transferred to him when he was baptized in the River Jordan. Sometimes we have to submit ourselves to others. Amen. You're not a law within yourself. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen. And sometimes those in spiritual authority has to submit to those in natural authority. If they're wrong, God will take care of it. But if you don't, God will take care of you for not submitting. Can I hear an amen? I mean, this is the word of God, people. Amen. Listen to me. God will fight your battle. God will fight people for you. You fight the devil. God will fight humans. Come on. We don't get into the arena of fighting humans. You give that to God. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. It says over here in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5, the, war, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds, bringing every thought into captivity and obedience of Jesus Christ. Amen. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. Listen to me. Your weapons are not carnal. You're not going to win with a carnal weapon. Amen. Because even if you do, you're going to face Almighty God in the end. And when you face Him, you did wrong. Can I hear an amen? Come on, we preach the simple truth. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. And you do not avenge yourself. Do not repay evil for evil. The Bible says, do not avenge yourself. Vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. And again, I will recompense. Some of you have been wanting to avenge yourself. Don't do it. Give the battle to God. And God will take care of it. Can I hear an amen? Or you're going to get in trouble. Can I hear an amen? It says over here, hallelujah, hallelujah, do not avenge yourself. Vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. That's Hebrews 10, 30 and 31. And the Bible also says in Romans 12, it says, do not avenge yourself. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Romans, do good for evil. Do good for evil. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despite, despitefully use you. Can I hear an amen? I want to pray for you today. Some of y'all are going through some hard tests and trials. And there's some people that's rose up against you. But I'm telling you today, I have the word of the Lord in my mouth for you today. My dear children, avenge not yourself. Vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. And again, I will recompense. And again, I will avenge you. I will vindicate. And I will avenge you. Thus saith the Lord. And I'm here today to tell you, bless some people. Don't come back against them. Be silent. 
You do spiritual warfare. You fight the devil, not people. Can I hear an amen? And if you don't know Jesus today, he wants to get to know you. Jesus died for the worst sinner on the face of the earth. He took a martyr's place on the cross. They released Barabbas, who was a thief and a murderer. And Jesus loved him. And he even went upon that cross for Barabbas, for every one of you. There's none of you out there has done nothing so bad that God won't save you today. Jesus took a martyr's place. He'll take yours today. He'll trade places with you. You see, it's like the prince and the pauper. You may be a pauper. You may be in sin today and be a pauper. But Jesus, the prince, if you remember that story, the prince and the pauper, they traded places. You see, that's an actual change that's going on. Jesus will take your sins and give you his life and his freedom and set you free. You want to be free today? You want to get to know Jesus? You don't have to be perfect. My God, He gives you grace to grow. Can I hear an amen? So many people are afraid they'll come into church and they'll go wrong. I want you to say this prayer for me today if you're tired of living the life you're living. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. You said if I ask you into my heart and I believe you died and you rose on the third day, if I confess with my mouth and believe into my heart into righteousness, I will be saved. Lord Jesus, save me. Come right now, save me. If you said that prayer, find your church and get into it. Serve the Lord. He'll be good to you. He'll bless you like you have never been blessed. And He'll be good to you. And if you miss it, He's always there to help you. Pick you back up, dust you off. Put you back on your road to destiny for Him. Can I hear an amen? God bless each and every one of you. We love you and we'll see you in the next program. God bless you. Amen. Let's roll one.